baseball, there's something called a batting average. A batting average measures the batter's success. How many times out of a thousand can you hit the ball and get on base? If we had a spiritual batting average, what would your spiritual batting average be? Without Jesus Christ, it is a zero percent because we all fall short of the glory of God. We needed a pinch hitter in life, somebody who would swing the bat for us. This is the whole point of the resurrection of Jesus Christ because Jesus batted a thousand. Impact Church, how's everybody doing today? No, 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 come on, let me hear you scream. Let me hear you shout amen. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Come on again, again, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Impact Church. I don't know if you came to the same Resurrection Sunday service I came to. I came to preach in the rain. I heard it might downpour here in a minute. Are y'all ready for that? It might downpour for a minute. You guys can be seated, you can be seated. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this wonderful day. It is a beautiful day. We don't even know what this is in Arizona, this water falling from the sky absolutely insane. We're grateful to be here today. We're grateful to serve you. We're grateful to worship you. God, we'll worship you in the rain. We'll worship you in the hail. We'll worship you in the sunshine. We're going to worship you no matter what. So God, we pray that you would speak to us today. Bless this word. Bless everybody here, everybody watching online. We pray this in Jesus' name. We all say amen. amen. How about one big round of applause for Jesus Christ today? I, I, I hate to say it, but like, that's kind of weak sauce for Resurrection Sunday. How about one big round of applause for our King, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When we first booked the stadium, we were worried about the sun. We were worried that, you know, by 10 o'clock a.m. it would be too hot. And then I started worrying about the rain, that it was going to be too wet. And then I started worrying because the news said that it might even hail. And, and I was thinking, you know, if it did hail, it would be one hail of an Easter, wouldn't it? I mean, it would be one hail of an Easter Sunday. But to be honest, to be honest, I'd rather swing for the fences than not swing at all. I'd rather go big for God or not go at all. I'd rather do what we need to do. And, and I gotta say, this is, this is an absolute grand slam for Impact Church. This is historic, not only at the stadium, but to be honest, I can't think of a better way to celebrate our Lord and Savior than under the rainy days. It has not rained on Easter Sunday in Arizona in 20 years. So it's almost like it was just waiting for Impact Church to have an event at the outdoor stadium. But you know, in baseball, how many, anybody love baseball? You are a baseball fan. In baseball, there's something called a batting average. A batting average measures the batter's success, right? Like the idea is this, how many times out of a thousand can you hit the ball and get on base? In fact, in recent years, the best players in baseball, Major League Baseball players, their league-wide average is batting 250. That means that on average, out of the best players in the world, they get on base 250 times out of a thousand. Or, or, or let's look at it the opposite way. It actually means that they don't get on base 750 times out of a thousand. And I, I, I was thinking about this spiritually speaking because if we had a spiritual batting average, what would your spiritual batting average be? 
And what would your, if you had a spiritual batting average, your batting average, what would that number be? And I thought I'd help you out with that because that number would be zero. Without Jesus Christ, your spiritual batting average is zero. It is a zero percent because we all swing the bat in, in life and we miss. We all fall short of God's glory. In fact, the Bible says that in Romans chapter three, verse 23, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the way, this is the whole point of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because Jesus batted a thousand. We, we needed a, a, a pinch hitter in life, somebody who would swing the bat for us. And Jesus not only lived a sinless life, but he also paid the price for your sins. This is what the Bible says in Romans chapter five, verse eight, it says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How many thankful for that? That while we were still sinners, because you hear a lot of people like, man, I, I don't know if I should go to church, like I'm kind of messed up. Well, you know what? Literally everybody in church is messed up. Like we all bat a zero percentage. And so I love that it says, while we were still sinners, while we were still sinners, we don't have to prove ourselves to God. He already knows and he already loves us. And I want you to think about three things today. And number one is this, is that God loves you unconditionally. Yeah, yeah, somebody should get more excited. I mean, I know it's a little rainy, but God loves you unconditionally. The Bible says that greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. John 15, 13, he loves us. He demonstrated his love for us by dying for us. He did it anyway. He loves you anyway. He died for you anyway. He loves you in spite of you. Like he loves you anyway. Never forget that God loves you unconditionally with no strings attached. This is important. This is important because human love does not love unconditionally. Human love loves with conditions. Human love, you, you, you're here, you're like, you're so righteous, some of you, and you're like, no, I love unconditionally. Human love loves conditionally. It has strings attached. Human love says, I love you until. Human love says, I love you until you do me wrong, until you did me dirty, until you betrayed me, until you cheat on me. Human love is conditional. That's why 50% of all marriages 50% end in divorce. But we one day, we stood on the altar. Who remembers? How many married today? How many married? Come on, how many married? No, 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 no. That, you're, you're, if you're married, let me hear you shout on three. One, two, three. All right, let's do the other way. How many are single today? One, two, three. You see how much more excited the single people are than the married, like, even in church, even in Christianity, 50% of all marriages end up in divorce because human love is, is, is conditional. God's love is the only love that is unconditional. He loves you unconditionally. The second thing is this, is that God forgives you. God forgives you. There's nothing that you've ever done that God won't forget. I told you it's about to rain. I told you, y'all said you were ready for it. You all said you're ready for it. Here we go. God forgives you and the Bible says in John 3, 16 that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, right? Everybody knows this verse. Everybody understands this verse. Even people who are not Christians know this verse. In fact, John 3, 16 is often 
scriptures that you see in baseball stadiums, on signs, right? John 3.16 are scriptures that you see in football stadiums, on signs. God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved the world that he gave. You know what, this is such a great, this is such a great church service. I've never seen this in a church service before. I've never, ever seen this in a church service before. But we got some diehards over here. Everybody look over here for a minute. We got some diehards out here in the rain with their chest painted with Impact Church all over it. Come on, you guys are rock stars for Jesus Christ right there. Come on, you guys are rock stars. John 3, 16, that God loves. His love is unconditional. He loves you. He died for you. He, he died for you, and it didn't just stop there. He rose for you. That is why we are here today, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we serve a living God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 24, on the first day of the week, that's today, very early in the morning, the women, they took the spices and they had prepared and they went to the tomb and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them and in their fright, listen, this is the part I want you to hear, in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the angel said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he has risen. Yeah, why? Do you look for the living among the dead? I think this is like the most savage question an angel could ask a human being. Why do you look for the living among the dead? But I think it's a great question for us today. Why, why impact church, friends and family? Why do we look for the living among the dead? I'm not talking even about Jesus today because we know he's risen, but I'm talking about we as humans are constantly looking for life. We're looking for love. We're looking for purpose. We're looking and starving for identity. We're looking for joy. We're looking for happiness. Man, if I, if I could just find peace. And what we do is we look for the living among the dead. Because we have this God-shaped hole in our soul that we're trying to fill so it will be satisfied. And we shove everything into it. We go, man, if I could just get some money, if I could just get some success, right? If I could just get some friends, if I could have a relationship, if I could, if I could. And we look for the living among the dead, I want you to know today that you will find what you're looking for in Jesus Christ. He is life, he is life. The Bible says in John that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, and those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. He is life. He is life. He is not only risen from the dead. He raises the dead. God brings dead things back to life. Listen, in the Bible, he raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. He raises dead things back to life. This is the whole point of the resurrection is that he can raise dead things back to life. He can raise bodies back to life. He can, he can raise your marriage, hello? He can raise your marriage back to life. He can, he can raise your emotions back to life. He can raise whatever situation is in your life that looks like it's dead, God is a God of resurrection power. And I have seen it, I have seen it in my own life over and over and over and over again. Most of you know 
that a year and four months ago, I suffered a brain aneurysm, hemorrhagic stroke. My brain began to bleed. It was in the basal ganglia area of my brain. I lost my speech, I lost my cognition, I lost my motor skills. The right half of my body went numb and is a matter of fact, still numb. The entire right side of my body is still numb. Cardiologists told my wife and I that the effects of the type of stroke I had, the effects of a basal ganglia stroke, the effects of the particular area of this brain bleed would be irreversible. At that moment when my wife heard that, I could not talk. I could not walk. He said, the effects I want you to be warned, to be prepared, understand that the situation that your husband is in, the effects of a basal ganglia stroke are irreversible. Another doctor told my wife and I a couple weeks later that you should be, a, you should be dead or a vegetable. I will never forget that phrase, as long as I shall live, that you shall be dead or a vegetable because Impact Church, I'm not dead. I'm not a vegetable. I've got my speech back and I've got my cognition back and I've got my motor skills back. And here I am today preaching in a baseball stadium in the middle of the rain and I'm happy to be here preaching God's word to anybody that will listen because our God is alive and he is a God of resurrection power. I don't know if you believe me today, but I believe that what God did for me, he can do for you. I believe that what God did for me, he can do for you. I believe, I believe, I believe. Woo! I believe that what God did for me, not only can he do for you, I believe he will do for you. I believe he will do for you. I believe because God is a God of resurrection power. He is the God of life. We all fall short, we all swing the bat, and we all miss the baseball. In life, we all swing the bat, and we all miss the baseball. In life, we miss the mark of God's perfection. We miss the mark of human perfection. We fail God, we fail other people, we fail ourselves. Have you ever failed yourself? Raise your hand. If you, raise your umbrella. If you've, ever, if, you've ever, if you've ever failed yourself. Most of you know this, but my best friend, Andre Wadsworth, is also the seed of where this church started. He played for the Arizona Cardinals and he was the number three draft pick, number three, number three overall. And Andre Wadsworth decided to start a Bible study for his teammates. Fast forward, I wanna welcome you all to the Arizona Cardinals Bible study because this is the Bible study. See, great things come out of seeds that are sown, but you have to sow the seeds, Impact Church. God will produce fruit in your life, but only if you sow the seeds. Your job is to sow the seeds. God's job is to grow the seeds. You need to be a sower in your life, not just a, a, a taker. I, I know a lot of people, all they do is take, 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 and try to figure out how they can take some more. I figured out the secret sauce to total joy in life, and that is when you give. Lay your life down for Jesus Christ because he gave up his life for you. Many people know this, but I am honored, privileged to serve also as the chaplain for the Phoenix Suns for the last 22 years. But what a lot of people don't know is that I also served Major League Baseball for 12 years as a chaplain, but I had, I had to retire because the church started growing and it got too, too, I should say too big, it got 
too big for me to continue in baseball. But for eight years here in Arizona, I was the major and minor league baseball chaplain for the Kansas City Royals. And then, and then I got traded. I guess I was, you know, I was a free agent. And I got traded to the Oakland A's. And I was the chaplain for the Oakland A's for the four, four years. But I gotta tell you this one story. When I was with the Kansas City Royals, we were in chapel. I wanna take you inside that room for a minute. And as we're sitting in chapel, there's about 25 guys, probably five or six pitchers. And I'm, I'm just making an illustration and I'm like, hey, I have a question. How fast can you pitch a baseball? And the first pitcher was like, I don't know, 94, 95. I was like, bro, that's some heat. Yeah, what about you in the 90s? What about you in the 90s? What about you in the 90s? And then I got to the last guy. Funny, he was the last guy. And he said, well, I throw in the 80s. And if you're a part of my church family, you already know this, but like my native tongue is trash talk. I love a good trash talk. And so I start trash talking this major leaguer and I said 80 something miles an hour, like dude, how'd you even end up in the big leagues? And then he said, well, I'm a junk ball specialist and knuckleballs and this and that. I said, I don't care, you don't sound like a specialist to me. And then one of the pitchers said, PT, how fast can you throw a baseball? I'm a trash talker, and I said, let me tell you something. I play softball in a men's beer belly softball league. You know that league where all the men drink beer and play softball? And I said, I play center field. I can catch the ball at the fence, and I can throw that ball all the way to the catcher, and I can burn his hand. So I'm just guessing that I could probably, I could probably throw the ball over 90 miles an hour at least once. <laughs> Another pitcher goes, let's go find out. He grabs the radar gun. We're in the locker room of the clubhouse. We walk out onto the field and all of a sudden, I'm like, dude, here it goes. So I start, I start warming up and I'm throwing heat. I'm warming up throwing heat. They didn't know I was already throwing as hard as I could throw. And then I got up to the pitcher's mound and I wound up, and I mean, I, you guys would be so proud of Pastor Trap. I threw that ball so hard. And my friend looked at the gun and he goes, 76 miles an hour. <laughs> I didn't believe him. I had to see the gun. I threw the baseball like another 30 times. It got worse from there. Not only did I have my expectations too high, I mean, I failed my own expectations. I legitimately thought that I could throw at least once in the 90s. And one of the major leaguers goes, PT, if you would have thrown one time in the 90s, these guys would have signed you right here on the spot. What I'm trying to say is that we all have these expectations that we fall short of. And this is my final point today, is that God wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. Listen, listen, you're here, it's rainy, it's, it's gonna come down for a minute, but we're almost done with this part uh, of the service. God wants a relationship with you. For everybody that's here, everybody that's listening online, I want you to understand, it is not about religion. It is about relationship. Listen, religion and relationship are two radically different concepts. Religion is about checking boxes. It's about burning candles. It's about going through a, a system. It, it's, it's exterior. It's not interior. God does not want you to be religious. He wants a relationship with you. The difference is that you can have a relationship with your creator. The difference is that you, not through me, you can talk directly to your creator. A relationship with you. See, I discovered this 30 years ago 
when I was living life for myself and I grew up playing every sport you could play and from the outside in, maybe it looked like I had my act together and life going on, but on the inside, I was empty. On the inside, I was conflicted. On the inside, I didn't have purpose. I mean, I thought the purpose of life was to be the best basketball player that I could be. I thought the purpose was be the best football player, be the best whatever. And it was all very much about me, 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 me. I did not have a relationship with God. And there was this night, and many of you know this, that I partied all through high school. I partied, I mean, I, I drank, I smoked. You know, I, I smell a little bit of weed right now, as a matter of fact. I didn't smoke it, but I smell it right here at church in this stadium. I used to party, party, party. I got pulled over one night. I got DUI, I got arrested, I got taken to jail. Watch this, watch this, this is crazy. I got taken to jail and my mother, who had fallen deeply in love with Jesus Christ, she has to pick her 17-year-old son up from jail and she takes me back to my hometown and she says, do you wanna go to my pastor's house and pray? I was drunk. My answer was no. I just stayed quiet because I thought if I don't answer, mom will stop asking. But mama kept asking. And it's midnight, February 20th, 1993. And we go knocking on the doors of this pastor's home. It, let me remind you, it's Saturday night. This, this pastor, he got church in the next morning. He, he invites me in. Listen, you guys, I was there for four hours. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I surrendered my life. I discovered a relationship with my Savior. It is a special day for me because that man's name was Pastor Melvin Middleton. And Pastor Melvin Middleton is like an Amelia or a Daniel or a Tyler, a worship leader that has the richest anointing upon his life. But the devils tried to take him out because the devil attacked his health over the last se several decades. The devil attacked him into diabetes. He started going through all these tests and all these trials. He's losing body parts now because of diabetes. He's confined to a wheelchair because of health issues. He's had to have some toes removed, some fingers removed. He, he can't go anywhere without being in a wheelchair and with his daughters helping him. But that man, let me tell you something. I want everybody to look at my finger right now. Look at my finger. Melvin Middleton, I want you to wave. wave, wave. Melvin, lift your hand. Wave your hand. Melvin Middleton right there in that suite. That man led me, that man right there led me I love you, man. That man led me to Jesus Christ. And you and I would not be here today if it weren't for that man sowing a seed. If it weren't for that man opening the door. If it weren't for that man spending four hours with me from midnight until 4 a.m. before he had to go do his own church services for several hours. What I'm trying to tell you, Impact Church, today is that God wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. I want to ask if you'll bow your heads and close your eyes with me, and I'm going to close us in prayer. Father God, today we come before you and we celebrate you on this Resurrection Sunday. God, you, you knew it was gonna rain because you're the one that creates the rain. You knew we were gonna be sitting here on this baseball field thousands of years ago. Every person within the sound of my voice, God created you. Every person within the sound of my voice, God loves you unconditionally. Every person within the sound of my voice, I want you to understand that God's love is unconditional with no strings attached, that he forgives you. That's the point of the cross, that he died for you, that he paid the price for your sins 
a price that you could not pay for your sins. He gave his life up as a ransom for you. He is the bridge between humanity and heaven. The bridge, his name is Jesus Christ. And he wants a relationship with you. Listen, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter how awful you think you are. It doesn't matter. You're never too far gone to come back to God. You're never too dirty for God to clean you up. You're never too broken for God to heal you. Because we serve a God of resurrection power. And today, I want to ask you, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know him? Not do you know about him? Because a lot of people know about him. I'm asking, do you know him? I'm asking, do you have a relationship with him? That's the difference. I, I, I used to know about God. My life did not change. I, I knew some stuff about church. I knew some stuff about the Bible. I knew some stuff about Jesus, but I, I didn't know Jesus. I'm here to tell you that I can tell you personally the power of God in a relationship with him will change your life. Jesus Christ is the missing piece. P-E-A-C-E. -E. He is your missing piece. Today, if you come empty, you come today with that God-shaped hole in your soul, I'm telling you, it is made for God and God alone. You cannot fill that hole in your soul with anything this world has to offer. You can't fill it with lust. You can't fill it with pride. You can't fill it with money. You can't fill it with success. You can't fill it with an earthly relationship. The only thing that fills that God-shaped hole in your soul is Jesus Christ. I am a living testimony. I will never not serve him. I'll preach whenever, wherever, however, to whoever will listen because my good God has changed my life. My good God has changed my wife's life. We both found Jesus. We discovered a relationship with him and he wants a relationship with you today. If you're here today and you say, PT, you're talking to me, man. I, I've been feeling like something's missing. I've been chasing the dead things of this world. I've been chasing the things in this world that have led me to dead end after dead end after dead end. I need Jesus Christ today. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. If today you mean business, you mean business with God. You say, you know what? I need Jesus. I need, I need Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you to do something that might be considered bold by some, but it's not bold by God. Jesus was publicly humiliated, beaten, flogged, whipped, crucified, mocked, spit on, beard plucked out, face slapped. Jesus hung in the middle of the, the tree in the middle of the air as that cross was raised up for you. So today I want you, I want you to do something that is bold. And you say, PT, you're talking to me today. I wanna give my life to Jesus Christ. I wanna surrender my life to him. I wanna give my life to him right here, right now in this baseball stadium that we've made into a church. We've made this into a house of worship. We've made this into a house of prayer. Right now you say, PT, I, I wanna give my life to Jesus Christ. When I count to three, I want you to stand to your feet. When I count to three, I want you to stand to your feet. And I believe that God's going to meet you when you stand up. God's going to meet you in that very moment when you stand to your feet. One. Two. Three. Come on, Impact Church family and friends, stand to your feet. Today you say, I want to receive Jesus Christ. Come on, everybody else, give these guys a round of applause. Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now?
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you, everybody, all of us together, whether you stood or not stood, I want you to pray with me and pray this prayer out loud. Dear Jesus, come on, let's say it with some boldness. Dear Jesus, today I give you my life. I want to become a Christian. I want to live for you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for the cross and paying the price for my sins. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we say amen. 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 Come on, Impact Church. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, one more, one more. Let's give him a big round of applause today. Hallelujah.